here's another little special project I'm doing. I've taken my top bars here and I've painted them. Look at that, implement green paint. And you may say, why on earth would you do that? I have a few more to paint here. I'm going to paint a hundred in all. Top bars green. I'm assembling these frames without foundation with the nice green top bars. So the assembly is exactly the same as everything else. And then I have something special in mind for these frames. For those hundred frames, I'm going to cut 50 sheets of this right cell in two, just like that on the table saw. Does a nice job. I've got a nice, uh, what is that, 80 tooth blade or so. Cuts real well. Freshly sharpened too. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do with these half sheets. Some of you may have figured out where I'm going with this. Made a hundred frames. I've cut 50 sheets in half. So that gives me a hundred half sheets. And I'm going to install this in the middle. I can eyeball the middle or I can measure it. I overthink things so I'll likely measure it. This idea I did not uh, pioneer. Lori Miller online uh, came up with this idea as far as I know. At least that's where I got it from her. And what happens here is I use this for a couple different things. I'll run one of these in every one of my colonies. And it's a partial drone frame. So what the bees will do is they'll draw this out as normal worker comb. Then they draw free form in here on the sides. And they will draw that either worker comb or drone size comb and they may actually fill it with honey depending on the season and what that does for you is a few different things you can use that as drone removal for a part of your mic control strategy there is a an impact on the mites uh, reproduction rate if you remove drone uh, larva before they emerge. Another thing it does for you is it keeps your hive quite clean. When you open your hive every time you likely have all kinds of drone brood along the top and you rip that open when you take the lid off or the second box if you're running doubles. And it's kind of a mess, a mess along the bottom. It gets to be a bit of a hassle management wise and, and this principle I discovered very much by accident I was inspecting other people's hives and I realized their hives are a mess compared to mine uh, because I ran drone frames not exactly like this but drone frames in some description uh, right from the beginning so I didn't realize how lucky I was to have such clean hives as far as all that burr comb and drone comb and stuff went so that's another advantage. And another thing it does for your hive is there's one name I have for these frames. I'll either call them my drone frames or, or you know, some such other thing. Or I'll call it my storyteller, my story frame. Because I'll tell you, you can pull that frame. I usually run these in position three in the hive. You can pull that frame and that'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story about that hive. Are they building drone comb? Are they building 
worker comb or is she laying drones in there is she not are they filling it with honey so you can you can see a lot of uh, a lot of the details of where your colony is at by what this frame looks like in particular maybe some new beekeepers won't uh, won't yet know this a weak hive a hive that's struggling or a hive that's building up will not produce drones they are not strong enough to use that extra energy to create drones so when a hive is creating drones they look upon that hive as being optimistic they're feeling good about the future they have resources they have even maybe uh, a surplus of resources and uh, they are creating drones so you pull that frame and you know and sometimes you pull that frame and both sides are just chalked right full of drone uh, brood maybe eggs maybe pupa maybe larva and uh, you look at that and you think okay these ladies are feeling good they have everything they need and more and they are going to uh, put that energy into drones to propagate their DNA uh, for other uh, colonies for mating mating queens out there for virgin queens that are mating uh, so that tells you a story the the honey uh, the honey storage you know you can see well are they backfilling my hive are they coming into a flow are they cleaning out the stored honey that they have in there are they cleaning that out and eating it um, so this one one frame really tells you a lot about your hive and that's why I really love to, to use them in every one of my uh, single brood chambers this year I'm going to go one step farther with these frames I'm actually going to use these for honey frames. I do know that uh, foundationless honey frames work fine. Deeps tend to collapse if they're not wired with support wires, uh, but the support wires kind of make it not very practical to cut out the honeycomb for a, for a, a comb honey product. Um, I'm hoping this will, because this will give me a, a pretty nice shaped, uh, I can get probably at least two uh, nice squares of comb honey out of each side and so I'm going to run those in the honey supers early on in the season so they have lots of flow to uh, build those out and fill them up and we'll see how that goes we'll we'll see how that goes and I'm sure that that will be uh, supported well enough that it'll even extract I'm sure I can run that through my my uncapper and then my radial extractor just fine uh, but that's uh, my my uh, hypothesis not my experience so I won't know that until next fall because I'm, I'm sure they won't all come to a point where I can cut them all for comb honey but even if I do you know if I cut the comb honey out of this part then I run this through the uncapper I uncap that and then that'll run through the extractor uh, that'll all be drawn then for next year and then they can continue and draw that out make more comb honey or not or just a foundation foundationless piece so that's the idea behind these and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do some more on this in the summer when when I actually have some uh, some of these in play and in use and, and we'll monitor them and see how they're coming along I cut these on the table saw I could have cut them on my uh, sliding compound miter saw uh, would have been probably even better because I could probably cut 10 or 15 of them at a time on that saw that would be much faster going so anyway I have a few more to cut so I'm gonna maybe move over there and see how well that works have fun <laughs>